We talked previously about hierarchies, which are ordered lists, and those are ordered by parent and child relationships. Now let's go on to um, indexes, the other major way that we organize information. And indexes are not sorted by parent and child uh, relationships, but they are sorted lists. There are lists of terms that are either alphabetically or numerically sorted, and those lists of terms give you access into a large base of information. So we have an index, for example, of the simplest example of an index is a title index. A title index is a sorted list of titles of the items that you want to give someone access to. And of course, an index is a very convenient way of organizing things, as you well know from the indexes that you've used. The idea of an index, the fundamental reason that it works to structure information, is that we already have in our heads this idea of an alphabetical relationship between terms or a numerical relationship between terms. No one has to tell you that a term that starts with Q comes long after a term that starts with B. And so you either literally run your finger along the index or, or metaphorically run your finger along the index looking for the right region, the right vicinity where the term you have in your head is listed and then you see where is that term in the info base that I'm trying to get to. And of course, you can always think about a book index as you, as you think about this stuff. In the book index, you run your finger down the index to, to the letter of the term that you have in your mind, run your finger across, and you see the different page numbers. The page numbers are the references. They're the places in the info base, the items in the info base that are responsive to that term. The term is, could be a title, could be a lot of different things. It's some piece of information, one word or a phrase, almost always a short word or a short phrase that gives access to the base of information and many items in the base might be indexed might be referenced by the same term right so that's the way that an index fundamentally works uh, an index um, an index can be made from all of the words in the info base that would be called a full text index an index could be you could be made from words that are already existing in the info base. For example, all the titles alphabetical. That would be, for example, uh, well, well, we'll talk about that later. That's a, a metadata index. Or an index could be from words that aren't in the info base at all that have been made up or keyed out to be the ones that are um, most expressive, most uh, representative of the information in the info base. And we'll call that a keyword index. So the idea of the index is always the same. It's an alphabetically or numerically sorted list of items that gives access to the info base. In the same way as a hierarchy, we generally expect that the index is going to uh, organize the entire info base. And so you wouldn't expect that only half of the items are indexed. If you, if you look at a term in the index and that term is um, a weather, and that you wouldn't expect that only half of the terms are accessible through that, that uh, index term weather, you would expect that all of the items in the info base are accessible through that, that index term weather. So it's comprehensive. Okay, so an index, um, an index allows you to get access to all of the items in an info base by an alphabetical or numerical list. We'll talk a little bit about the difference between that and a sequence when we come to sequences. A sequence is also a list, but it's not sorted alphabetically or numerically. It's sorted in the order that the author decides you should see the items. Okay, so an index um, uh, is, uh, let's see. Uh, okay, so we'll look at the index from a couple of perspectives. The first is from the end user perspective. What purpose does an index serve to an end user? Think about it. When you've gone to the index in the back of a book, why have you gone there? The reason is because you have a particular phrase or word in your mind. You're, you've come to this info base with some existing piece of information that you want to use as a key, as an access into that info base. And so you look in the index to see, is it in here? Is this term that I'm thinking of in my head in the info base or isn't it? And if it is, where is it? So you might think of it as random access into the middle of the info base based on some word or phrase that you have in your mind. And that tells you a lot about how indexes are often organized. There's like swarms of mosquitoes all around me. That's why you see me swatting myself. Um, uh, the, the index is, uh, it concerns words in two ways. One is the words that are actually in the info base that describe the items in the info base. The other are the words that someone might have in their mind that aren't in the info base but are still there. We might call the ones that someone has in their mind but aren't in the info base leader terms. They lead you into the correct terms. And we might call the terms that are in the info base already preferred terms. They're the terms that we prefer to use. And so we might say um, uh, we have a, a leader term and that leader term is called uh, bear. Right? But we never really say bear in this info base. We say grizzly bear, brown bear, black bear. So it might say grizzly bear, see brown bear, sorry, sorry, bear, see grizzly bear, brown bear, black bear, etc. 
Okay, so we have our leader terms and our preferred terms. From the standpoint of the manager, the manager is able to slice information on any dimension using indexes. So if I want to know when things have been created, the manager is the person who's putting together the info base, I want to see when things have been created, I might organize them, sort them by date to see them in date order because that will help me manage them. Or I might sort them in the order of the author of them, where they were, what they were created. Or I might sort them in terms of, in, or, in order of type. I have this info type, this info type, this info type. And so indexes are key for being able to manage information, or for, for the manager to be able to slice the information along any dimensions that they want. Uh, let's see, I, I mentioned the idea that, that indexes are random. So you can get random, index, random access into the middle of an info base, whereas uh, hierarchies are a little bit more sequential. You usually scan through the hierarchy in the order that it's presented to you until you come to the right one. And so you're going through it sequentially. But really in an index, you're going through it uh, <coughs> excuse me, in a random order. You're just going directly to the one you want and then bam into the middle of the info base. Okay, um, I mentioned that indexes are comprehensive. We, ge we generally think that everything in the index is going to be, everything in the info base is going to be indexed. So we think of them as being comprehensive. Um, they go beyond just simply what's in the info base. They can, they can also include concepts that aren't in the info base explicitly, but are there by, um, by implication. So if I'm talking about, uh, for example, I'm talking about grizzly bears, well, by implication, I'm talking about mammals. Right? So that, that, that index can, conclu can include uh, uh, a term called mammals, even though mammals aren't explicitly mentioned in the info base. Uh, and I think those are the big ones. So if you were to scan through an index, you would see all the words and concepts and phrases that are most important to that index. All right, so in the future topics, we'll go through particular kinds of indexes, and I'll tell you how each one of those works, and we'll begin to focus more and more on the, uh, on the structure that you use inside of an XML system to represent that kind of index. Hit it, Ed.